So hello there, this is Randall Schwartz back again with another tip or trick or something related to Dart or Flutter for my uh, Dart and Flutter channel. I know I've been gone a little while, I'm back. Alright, so today we're going to talk about the idea of calling run app twice in your main. Why would you want to do that? Well, I'm going to get to there by using an illustration. So right now we're looking at something that's probably very familiar to y'all. The good old counter app. Okay, yeah, yeah, we've all seen that. And uh, when it's running, of course, we've got this wonderful display here. And we can go ahead and count things. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. Nothing really exciting there yet, because it's just the counter app. But let's add a little bit of logging capability here. Uh, let me type a couple things there. Okay, so now, up in our uh, top of our program, we have something that will print the current time, date time now, and whatever string I pass in. So I'm passing in string s. It's basically a quick logging so that we can see when things are happening. And to main here, I have added the uh, stamp main and also stamp running app. Now, these should be pretty close in timing because all we're doing is going immediately from one to the next. So let's run this again from scratch. And because I've made changes at the global level here, I have to always do hot restart every time, not uh, hot reload. So we're doing a hot restart. If you watch the uh, log in the lower left corner, or and also watch, if you can, this number four here. Watch that when I restart, we reset back to zero, because that's going to show us that the app is actually running. Here we go. Here's the push button, and what do you know? We reset to zero, that's right. And we also see two timestamps that are differ only by, what, nine thousandth of a second, so pretty uh, pretty close together there. Or, yeah, yeah, nine milliseconds, right? Well, let me do the right unit of time for that sort of stuff. Okay, so far, nothing exciting. So far, yes, we just added a couple stamps. But let's say we have an app that requires certain setup before we can begin our actual application. Like, for example, we're going to talk to Firebase, so we have to do the Firebase initialize before we do that. Or we're going to go get stuff from our local storage, so we have to go open that up, and because that's platform channels, it always involves... Uh, some sort of delay, uh, some sort of future, and all that sort of stuff. So the, the um, logic for that is that we go up in our main and do some stuff with a wait before we actually get into the run app. And that looks a bit like this. So you see here, now we've still got main, we've still got running app, but I've added something in the middle here. I'm going to simulate a two second delay. So this is like maybe the time it takes to talk to Firebase for the first time or something. I don't know. Two seconds is actually pretty long, but I wanted it so you'll be able to see it. Okay, and once again, let's move this app forward a little bit so that we can see when the app actually restarts, because that five will end up being a zero again. In the meanwhile, it would have been the white screen just before the app starts. So again, I've got an await. I had to make this async up here, but I've got an await that awaits two seconds and then prints two as a stamp. Now we're going to do the restart again. And again, watch the five over there and also watch the, um, the debug console in the lower left. You've got to watch them both, so maybe just rewind the, uh, the video and watch them later on. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the hot restart once again. Watch this. On the left side there, look at that. So the main, and then there was a two second delay in there, see? From 1638.58 to 16.39. Okay, that's two second delay. And that's because we were running this code here for two seconds. 
Uh, and, but then it finally came to a working app. Here's our working app. We can press the button again and do the counting and stuff. So that's not bad. So that means that we'll have two more seconds of whatever the native splash is, whether it's a white page like it is to begin with, or whether you've done something fancy with a Flutter uh, native splash and done some really, really cool things. I've seen some really remarkable things there. That's not bad. But let's say it's not just two seconds. Let's say we also have, ho oh, ho, four seconds. We've got a four second thing as well. So now I've got two seconds to run and four seconds to run, right? So what happens there? Okay, again, we've got two seconds and then four seconds. And then finally we're running the app. The app resets back to zero, okay? Um, so that's taking longer and it's because we're doing these in series. I know that's not the way you guys end up doing it, but I wanted to get there one step at a time. Okay, let's be really crazy so that you can really see a delay in human time as opposed to just machine time. So let's go and add, here we go, what did you, how many people guessed adding a six second one just to have an even longer one? Or I bet some of you guessed eight, like it's power to two, but uh, I just picked six because it was here and easy. Okay, and again, the two second will run, the four second will run, the six second will run, and then finally our app is going to start up. And here we go watching it. Okay, great. So there's our two second one. Here comes the four second one, a little longer. And then the six second one, even longer. And finally, boom, there's our app up and running. Okay, so this is often what people do when they have some initializations to run first, like they have to go out and touch a database or do something before their real app can run. Okay, but one thing we can do, even without introducing some new ideas, is we can actually take these three things and run them in parallel. How do we do that? We do that by including a future wait. Now, future wait takes a list of futures. Here's our list of futures. And it essentially runs them all in parallel, fires them all off in parallel, and waits until all of them have either completed or errored out. So in this case, the two, the four, and the six are all going to be racing in parallel all the way down. And now let me uh, tap this up a little bit just so that we can see when it finally resets. And here we go. So watch what happens now. So main runs, okay, two seconds, and just four seconds, and just six seconds. So there was only six seconds between main and printing six. If we look at the timestamps over here, we can see that. And once again, our app is running, but now only delayed six seconds instead of 12 seconds like it was before. And again, our app is a lot. Okay, so this isn't bad. We're parallelizing some tasks. So that still gets us a little bit closer to human interface guidelines. Be able to, you know, get that app up and running quickly. But it's still leaving what would be a white screen up here, or if you've used Flutter Native Splash or other similar packages, uh, would be whatever that was. It's still static text. Well, is there an alternative to that? Yes, we could use a spinner, but where do we fit the spinner in here? I know people have done it down in the app and set some futures out on the side somewhere and then have a future builder that does the spinner until the values are all done. That's one way of doing it. Okay, but I've got a much simpler way. You can drop this in right away into any of your apps. It's going to be using the fact that we can call run app twice in main. Look at this. We've got a run app that is going to create a circular progress indicator, our friend. The most boring circular progress indicator you can possibly get, except that it spins. Now, we start that running, 
Now we go do all of our awaits. Okay, and let them run. And then we call run app a second time to be fully powered up with our final app. Wow. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so we've already got a number in here. The app is still running because I haven't done the restart yet. Let's do the restart and see what happens. So we restarted. Oh, the spinner's already running. And here's our two. Here's our four. Here's our six. And now we go to the actual app. So notice that the spinner was actually running all the way through our initialization. Now that can be any animation. The only trick with this initial run app is you can't take advantage of anything else down here yet because we haven't run that stuff down here. So in other words, if we need to have a value from a database to show, can't do that yet because we don't have that initialization done. And so on. But you can do quite a bit with some sort of animation up here just to keep the uh, user happy or at least entertain slightly while the app is still finishing the initialization. So pretty easy to do, pretty slick to do. Just add a second run app and life is good. So that's about all I had to say today. Uh, be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel and thumb it up and all the other awful, awesome, <laughs> awful things, awesome things. And uh, I'll be back again soon. I've got 77 things in my queue. I'm just trying to get to all of them. So enjoy.